I generally read something out from the writings of Prophet Musim Abdul Aslam after uh, Friday. But today uh, I wanted to share some thoughts I had with you. And they relate to uh, divine appointees, those who appear in this world. You see, some people think that just because a person, God speaks to a person, that person has become a reformer or a mujahid. That is not the case. You see, if I go to, uh, I went to law school and did some legal exams, or someone goes to university and they does an LLB. Do you think that the government allows him to practice as a lawyer or a solicitor? Javad here, he went to medical school and passed his MBBS. Was he allowed to let loose upon the population to cure them or kill them the day after he got his certificate or degree or whatever? There are many things that have to come together to establish someone as being appointed by God to carry out <coughs> the task of reform. First and foremost is the need. And the need is established if the era of the previous divine appointee has finished and completed. For example, the Holy Prophet Muhammad appeared because the era of Jesus had finished, it's completed. The work he had come to do couldn't be advanced any further without a new prophet coming. So the Holy Prophet Muhammad came again to re-establish unity of Godhead and everything else that we know about. It is the same with Mujaddads. Previous, previous Mujaddads who came, for example, we had, uh, I think, uh, what was his name, Hazrat Mujaddad al-Afsani who appeared around the time of uh, Mughal Empress when Mughal emperors thought they were divine appointees. So what did he concentrate on? Did he say Jesus is dead? <coughs> did he say go and read scriptures of other religions? He concentrated only on one thing. And that is that there is only one God. These are human beings. One day they are going to die. You see, if a patient... Go, if, if a person comes to me and he says to me, I want a divorce, and I say to him, oh yes, under asylum law you can make an application for asylum. Would he think I am mad or not? I have come to you asking for advice about how to get divorced and you are telling me I can apply for asylum. If someone went to a doctor and said, I've had a heart attack. And the doctor said, oh yes, that's fine. I'll remove your appendix. Would you consider him to be a sensible person? And it's the same. If Hazrat Mujaddad al-Afsani had said, Jesus is dead, people would have said, well, what's the relevance? The evil at our time, the fitna at our time, is the fact that these Mughal emperors are forcing us to prostrate before them. I mean, these emperors, were, they were called Zillaylai. Shadow of God on earth. Even their children and their wives could not speak to them as equals. They had to address them with formal titles and so on and so forth. And same with, let's say, the Mujaddid who came before uh, Hazrat Masih Abdul Aslam, Sayyid Ahmad Shaheed. What was, what was the need at the time? 
the need at the time was that Muslims were being persecuted in a part of India and he sought to remove that persecution. He travelled across the whole of India to get to the Punjab. He travelled across British territory, territory that was ruled by the British, to get to, uh, to Punjab and where he carried out a jihad of the sword against the Sikhs. Why? Because Muslims were being persecuted with the sword. They were being killed simply for what? For calling out the Islam. If he had said, Jesus is dead, would Muslims have thought him a sensible person? So one important thing is, what is the need? And need arises because the work of the previous person is complete. Now let's look at the reform that Hazrat Musim of the Islam carried out. And let us look at whether that work is completed or not completed. One reform he carried out was, what's the concept of jihad? Is that work completed? No, it's not. Large numbers of Muslims and non-Muslims alike have a totally uh, wrong impression of what jihad is. Another important reform that he carried out was that wherever Muslims go, they should obey that government as long as it does not interfere in their religious beliefs. Is that work complete? Of course it's not complete because people who are born here, who go to school here, they then go to uh, jihadi camps and come back with training and bomb and, uh, and, and kill their own compatriots. These people, a lot of them who carry out these bombings and so on, they're not born and bred in, in Muslim majority countries, but in the West, especially in Britain. There was one thing that one Pakistani president said that I liked. He said, you are saying that we train these people. We don't, you train them. They're born in Britain, they go to school in Britain, they grow up in Britain. So what kind of education and society are you given them that they want to come back to learn to fire machine guns and mo make bombs so they can go back and blow uh, their own compatriots up? There must be something wrong with your system, not ours. But anyway, that, that's another point. And if you look at anything, even today, when Muslims come to my home, they uh, are taken the books into the other room now, they look at things, they say, why have you got an English translation of Guru Granth Sahib? Why have you got an English translation of the Old Testament? Why have you got a translation of this thing? You're a Muslim. Why are you reading these books? And as I said, if I don't read these books, when Jehovah's Witnesses knock on my door, what do I say to them? If I bring the Quran out, What's he going to say? What's a Jehovah's Witness going to say if I bring the Qur'an? Well, I don't believe in this. There's no point in you showing me what the Qur'an says about something. I don't believe in it. So I have to bring out the Old Testament, the New Testament and say, look, John said, was asked, are you Elijah, are you the Messiah or are you that prophet? So who's that prophet? And I noticed from the movie this morning, they actually removed the words, that prophet. I don't know how many of you saw this movie about the life of Jesus, but in that John is asked, are you Elijah, are you the Messiah? And then it ends there. They don't carry on with the next bit, which is, or are you that prophet? But if I don't read the New Testament, how will I know that there's a third person there? How will I know that that bit has been edited out? Is that work complete? Is the work of translation of the Holy Quran into all the languages uh, complete? Is the work of establishing the primary sources of Islam, that is Quran, it's Sunnah, it's Hadith, then anything else, is that complete? Even yesterday I was having uh, uh, an argument on Facebook with a, with, a, with a person who accuses me of denying the Hadith and so on and so forth. And I'm explaining to him that no. The source is going this order, the Quran, the Sunnah, the Hadith. And if a lower one contradicts the higher one, you don't adjust the higher source, you reject the lower one. 
what is it, what reform is it that he started, that the promised Messiah salam, started, which is, uh, which is complete. And really, it's like having a circle within a circle. If this is the circle of prophethood of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, and that end, it goes from the beginning to the day of judgment. Then within that circle, there is another circle that starts at the beginning of the last century and goes to uh, the day of judgment. And that circle is the Mujaddad ship of the promised Islam. <coughs> Until the superiority of Islam <coughs> is established over all religions and its correct reaching, teachings are established, his era will continue. And people will arise, some great, like Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ali and uh, his companions, may Allah bless them all for what they did, and some lowly ones, like me, who will try and carry on the work of that reform that Hazrat Muslim Islam started. So we must remember, it. it's not just a question of, you know, if God sends me a revelation and says, you know, you are the prophet for England, should I go out and without having the character and the qualifications and, and the achievements, go out into the street in Piccadilly Circus in Hyde Park Corner, start distributing, I'm the prophet for, uh, for England. We have to bring all these things together, just like I said, a doctor gets his degree, then he gets his training and a lot of things come together to make a person a doctor. In the same way, a lot of things have to come together to establish someone as, a, as an objective. So I just had these thoughts recently, so I thought I would share them uh, with you. Yeah.